Hello, everyone, and we have a great slate of news for you today. We're going to talk about how the U.S. government moved $2 billion worth of crypto, but you don't really have to worry about that. I'll explain why. We're going to talk about how Solana is probably not a security anymore, as defined by the SEC. Uh, Vice President Harris, presidential nominee Harris, is going to speak at the next Bitcoin conference. Maybe they're working on it. And there's record Bitcoin open interest, which suggests that Bitcoin's about to make a good move. So let's get started. So the U.S. government has moved $2 billion in crypto. They have $14 billion. And this is from Silk Road. Um, I think they had something like 20-something billion via the Silk Road stuff. But they've been selling it over the last many, many years. And this is just another movement. Now, the U.S. government, unlike the German government... Um, they don't sell on the open market. They always auction it off. So the effect on price will be very much mitigated. Obviously, some of people are saying like, well, RFK and Trump, they said they would make Bitcoin a reserve. So they're going to sell all of it before they come into office. That's not true. They only moved one seventh of all the Bitcoin and they moved it to not Coinbase or Binance or an exchange to sell. They moved it to like an unknown wallet and the most they will do is OTC sell it like they have been doing piecemeal uh, of the other Bitcoin holdings. And like I said, that generally does not affect the price all that much. It's going to be over time and it's going to be direct sales to like BlackRock, Fidelity, or other big buyers, not just like dumping the price on the market like what Germany did. So a lot of people were freaking out about that. There's no reason at all to be scared about that. No reason at all to be freaking out about that. Um, it's kind of like a regular process that they do, and they've been doing it once or twice each year for many years now. Um, until they actually have the legislation to make Bitcoin a strategic reserve, they're going to continue selling it because there's nothing in the books that essentially allows them to keep a volatile asset uh, and not sell it from a seizure. But it's been several years and they've been selling it very slowly, not affecting the price all that much. So you should not worry about that. Solana may no longer be a security as defined by the SEC. In their lawsuit against Binance, which uh, the, basically the judge declared that uh, more or less BNB wasn't a security, the SEC had a list of securities it was going to sue Binance for for listing and selling unregistered securities. However, they have removed Solana from that list. That means they're probably not gonna go after Solana, but I have another reason to believe that why they moved Solana from that list. Remember, something ha can't be a security if um, the ETF wants to get passed. And remember, Solana is the only non-Bitcoin and non-Ethereum coin to have someone submit an ETF for. So I believe the SEC is trying to stealthily move the obstacles out of the way for a Solana approval. And I do actually think Solana ETF will probably be approved next year, regardless of if there's a change in the White House or not. I think Gensler and everyone sees the writing on the wall. Uh, if they say Ethereum is not a security, there's no way they can say Solana is a security. Plus them actually losing the Binance lawsuit and the judge declaring that secondary sales of Binance, BNB coin, was not a security. I think they realized it was very, very difficult, if not impossible, for them to declare Solana a security. And if they fought it out, it would just make them look really, really bad. So they were like, you know, we're going to save ourselves the trouble and just kind of like remove you off our securities list so you can have the ETF. So if you want your coin to not be declare a security, get someone to file an ETF for it. Because at this point, unless you're already entangled in a legal battle like Ripple, uh, the SEC will probably just rel relent and take your coin off the securities list. And with your coin off the securities list, you can have that ETF. Unfortunately, BlackRock did say that they're not interested in filing another ETF outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum because they do not believe there is enough interest among the populace. I think they're wrong. I think there's going to be a couple of ETFs that do have enough interest. But either way, I do believe the SEC did remove Solana off the securities list in preparation for the first big altcoin, non-Bitcoin, non-Ethereum ETF that might actually happen next year because that's really the only reason I'd see that they would actually remove it so fast. I mean, there's the lawsuit stuff, but the lawsuit is more regarding Binance and not Solana. So it's surprising to me that they would actually remove Solana unless they wanted to approve the ETF. Uh, Vice President Harris, 
Uh, the big Democratic donors are pushing for her to speak at the next Bitcoin conference. She obviously didn't speak at Nashville. They want her to speak at Permissionless. I don't think she's going to be as bullish or tr as Trump or RFK, but she her role is really just to reassure crypto people that they're not going to destroy the industry and maybe some of these lawsuits are going to stop. Uh, I'm not really sure if she'll like really push the KYC AML thing at the conference because that would be kind of a negative thing, I suppose. But you know, like they're going to push KYC AML when it actually comes to policy. However, if she, if she can get, uh, I will trade the, all that KYC AML stuff if she can just say that most crypto or like direct Ginsburg to say that most crypto is not a security and stop with all the harassment and lawsuits and establish more clarity for crypto. Don't really, uh, I don't really mind the KYC AML stuff, at least in, not in the United States. That's really only for on-ramps and off-ramps. They need to give up the stuff about the self-hosted wallets and stuff. That's just never going to work. Um, if they just have strict KYC for on-ramps and off-ramps, I think they can get what they want and we can get what we want. Because I have no problem with like strict KYC on-ramps and off-ramps. I just don't like them messing with the industry too much and trying to declare everything as a security and having some like impossible guidelines that some of these companies cannot follow. But good news is there's record BTC open interest. And that's awesome because BTC open interest represents how many people are actually dabbing in the market. So there's a lot of people dabbling in the market right now. The open interest is at a record high. That means that there's a lot of shorts and a lot of longs, but that means there's more excitement in the Bitcoin market. There's going to be more volume. And eventually that does translate to, um, I, I do believe that does translate to just overall like a bigger market and a stronger market and a higher market, especially with all these pro crypto presidential speeches. I definitely think like the excitement's building and uh, whether like who elected for president, I think there's some great things coming for crypto in the next year. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe, hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a good day.